Hey everybody, this is Chris Ward, broker in charge, Eagle Realty, North Myrtle Beach. Welcome to another edition of the Eagle Reality Career Talk for real estate agents or just really for anybody in business, anybody who's an entrepreneur or owns a business or works in an industry that may be or have some aspects that are, you know, corresponding with how the real estate industry might work. I hope you can glean something for your business um, or for your business practices, where you work, your career from this podcast, apply something. And really in these next couple episodes, um, I think there is. I think there's a lot that you can apply directly to your business from what we are going to be talking about, not only starting last episode, if you haven't checked that out, go back, check out the last episode of the podcast. You can subscribe on iTunes or go to our SoundCloud.com account, Chris Ward Bick, that's B-I-C, and check that out um, on our latest on our latest podcast episode that was last week with Carolina Social Media special guest Sean McKenna was with us, and we were kind of kicking off this segment of this little series of a couple podcasts talking about your marketing as a real estate agent, as a realtor. Um, when you run your own business, when you own your own business, you are not only the CEO and the janitor, but you're also the marketing department for the most part um, when you're just starting out or when you're just on the front end um, of growing your team. You still, and especially in a business like real estate and a career as being a realtor, you are really responsible for most of your marketing. Now you can hire a marketing firm. You can go to someone like carolinasocialmedia.com and um, employ the skills and delegate that part of your business and your business strategy to, I guess, quote unquote, professionals. But I totally think, and I think when I actually talk with real estate agents, when I interview real estate agents, I talk with them, I kind of put a focus on marketing. Like, how are you at marketing, design, photo taking, Facebook, social media, digital strategy, websites, have you ever built you know, a single page website? Do you blog? How familiar, familiar excuse me, are you with marketing techniques and marketing strategy and know-how because that's just part of running and growing your business in real estate or any business. Um, now, I may have a little slight bent, a little, a little bit of a uh, prejudice, if you will, because uh, my background's marketing. My my undergrad and bachelor's degree is in marketing and management from Coastal Carolina University, and I like marketing. I that's 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 the probably the most fun part of my career personally as a broker in charge and as a realtor is marketing not only for real estate for clients like trying to sell their home to get new leads buyer leads like just all marketing strategy and campaign campaigns to build my business but also to brand and market my company um, Eagle Realty and other companies that I get to work with as well usually what I bring to the table and what I like to do personally is bringing the marketing strategy and implementation uh, for marketing in today's culture. I just look, you know, that's that's just what I try to research, that's what I try to be on top of. Um, that's what I try to know is like how to market in today's world. Now, we're gonna have a couple different episodes talking about very specific marketing strategies, um, marketing know-how, when you are in real estate um, on the last episode, again, go check it out. Check out the last podcast episode. We we did talk about just kind of a macro view about marketing in today's world and what you need to be doing as a real estate agent and as a realtor, marketing yourself and your business where some of that attention should be um, based on where your consumer or potential clients are and where their attention is. That's the arenas that you should be in. Um, and we talked about some you know, free versus paid marketing, all that kind of thing. Uh, so go back and watch that, you can listen to that. Today, I'm talking about something a little bit different, very specific to to Realtors, but really, really it can be applied to businesses as well. And we're gonna talk about sphere marketing. And here's the thing they tell you when you get into real estate, who's your sphere? It's usually the first question actually I ask new agents getting into real estate is, and, and even, even agents that have been in the business for a while, I ask them, where is your business coming from? For new agents, I ask them, what kind, of, what kind of database do you have for your sphere? Because that's usually, according to NAR statistics, the bulk of your business over the length of your career. I think something like 77% are gonna come from repeat clients, 
um, or past client referrals or referrals from your sphere, people that you know already, um, including friends, family, coworkers, um, people that are warm leads that are within your sphere of influence. Now when I say sphere, let me just kind of define that like I just did. Friends, family, coworkers, um, ex-friends, ex-family, ex-coworkers, I don't want to say ex, but I mean just people maybe that you don't live around anymore. Maybe you haven't had a ton of contact with, um, but as long as you're on good terms, I include them in your sphere. You need to be able to connect with people that you know. That doesn't mean just friends on Facebook. Hopefully, you know, someone like me, I, I might have like more acquaintances is a good word on Facebook than than actual than their actual friends of mine. Um, so your sphere is a little bit closer than that, but it can be extensions. It can extend out beyond just the maybe the six, seven, eight people that you really act interact with on a regular basis. Um, maybe it, it does go beyond kind of to what you would consider an acquaintance, but it's still part of your sphere. When you start actually compiling that list, and here's what I want you to do first. Step one, compile the list of your sphere. When you get into real estate, if you are in real estate, you should have a database of emails and or contact information that is your sphere. Uh, like I said, friends, family, coworkers, people that you know and talk to, church friends, whatever. You need some kind of contact information. You probably already have it in your phone. You need to compile that into a database. These are the first people you send, you know, your announcement you're getting into real estate. These are the first people you tell if you're switching to a new company. These are the people that are the first on your email newsletter list. These are the people that like your uh, business Facebook page first, you know, when you invite them. These are the people that you interact with that need to know that you're in real estate because they are your first line of free marketing to their sphere. Sphere marketing includes exponentially growing your business from a marketing aspect by using word of mouth and uh, branding yourself as the realtor expert in their social world. Which means even if you don't know their friends and family, they, the people in your sphere, their network becomes your network. And that's where you need to get the ball rolling as far as being in front of them and making sure that your sphere is well saturated to know that you are the real estate expert in whatever area you work in. Like if you're working in North Myrtle Beach in our area, they need to know that. Now, most of us down here are transplants. We all, a lot of us have not grown up around here. So our sphere, this is even better for our business because our buyer demographic is not heavy local buyer demographic. It's obviously people looking for vacation homes, second homes, retiring down here. So if you came from out of state, that's even better because your sphere is a probably from one of the states that buy down here a lot. So you need to find out how to stay in front of those people that don't live around you, that aren't here, that are part of your network, so that their network becomes your network, so that when someone around them, one of their coworkers, one of your spheres family members, one of your spheres friends, or church fellow church member, or, or wherever they're at, and they hear real estate, it triggers in their mind, because you've branded yourself so well to your sphere, that when they hear the word real estate, or Myrtle Beach, or anything associated with the local region that you work in, that they automatically think of your name to say, hey, you know what? My friend, my brother, my niece, my cousin is a real estate agent down there. You should give them a call. That is your optimal goal with sphere marketing. To do that, you have to, again, be well branded. So to these people, the sphere of influence, your second step, after you have a database is making sure you're staying in front of them, whether that's email newsletters, whether that's every once in a while scheduling five people in your sphere to call or text per week or to send a little bomb bomb video email to, um, to connect with Facebook Messenger, whatever it is, you're connecting very frequently with your sphere of influence to stay in front of them and to brand yourself as a local real estate expert for whatever region you are in so that when they hear keywords like the region or hey I'm going to vacation in North Myrtle Beach hey by the way you know I have a friend I have a cousin down there that's a real estate agent in case you you need any help with anything that's what your goal is for sphere marketing and here's the last aspect of this I know it's a little shorter episode but sphere marketing is kind of a common sense thing if NAR says that the majority, anywhere from 60 to 80% of your business of the life as a real estate agent will come from your sphere of influence. 
people that you know and the referrals from people that you know. If that's where the bulk of your business is going, why are you spending the bulk of your budget elsewhere for cold leads? Let that question sink in. Let me say it again. If you are getting the bulk, the majority, 60 to 80% of your real estate sales business from your sphere and referrals from your sphere, that includes past clients, current clients, friends, family, coworkers, people that you know or have worked with, then why are you spending 60 to 80% of your marketing budget elsewhere to get cold leads? We are inefficient with our marketing budget usage. We as realtors need to put money into our sphere marketing. You think you can just do it word of mouth, but you need to have strategy behind it. You need to be diligent in how you are marketing. Step three is this. You have to put the bulk of your budget where the bulk of your business is coming from. You cannot leave it out. You need to budget for sphere marketing. What does that look like? I've already given you a couple of talking about email campaigns, bomb bomb video emails, staying in touch through social media. That's all good and well. But you need to be doing things that include special events, contests, um, touch points for current and past clients and your sphere. An example, client appreciation parties should be having th you should be having client appreciation parties uh, for your clients you should be providing special um, educational classes like a foreclosure class how to buy investment property classes for your sphere exclusive to your sphere um, you can you can do this for cold too but 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 make your sphere sphere um, feel spe special your, your sphere of influence it's kind of hard to say sphere of influence make them feel special make them feel like your attention is on them. There may be within RESPA guidelines, certain like gifts, giveaway things that you can do that really make them feel, feel special. The goal is that even if it may not be, even if you don't have to spend the majority of your budget money, actual like dollars on that, your time, energy and focus needs to be split evenly. I'm not saying drop all cold marketing activities. I'm just saying that maybe you need to think about how can I spend not only money, but time, focus, and energy on the majority of where my business is coming from. Just shift your focus a little bit and see if you can even increase your referral business. If you can get more of your sphere to recognize you as a local expert, be branded so that as they, as their networks become your networks, your brand and your real estate business grows exponentially through word of mouth and connecting with people that you already know and those become warm leads. And we all know that warm leads are way easier sometimes to deal with than cold leads um, as far as actual return on investment in dollar figures, it definitely adds up um, to being a better ROI ratio than the marketing money that we usually spend on cold leads. And conversion rates are higher as well. I could go on and on about that, but I think you know that. I think sometimes we just need to be reminded. So the point of today's podcast, one, make sure you database, database your sphere of influence and every time you have a new referral or connection that you can add to your sphere, add to it. Two. You need to be consistent in your marketing and efforts as far as branding and contacting your sphere of influence. And three, make sure that your energy, focus, and budget are focused on where the majority of your business is going from. Make sure that ratio of those three things are in line with where your business is actually happening from. I hope you guys enjoyed today's podcast. Again, Chris Ward. Broker in Charge, Eagle Realty, North Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Please subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, The Eagle Re Reality Career Talk, um, or at SoundCloud slash Chris Ward Vic. That's B-I-C. Check us out all over social media at Eagle Realty SC, and I will talk to you next time.